So I should apologise if you can hear noise today. My uh, 15 month year old and my husband are having difference of opinion about how long it takes to cook lunch. So one thing I've been saying I'm going to do for a little while is talk about the subscriptions that I get. Um, so I get the Slightly Fox magazine, which is quarterly, and I get London Review of Books, which is every fortnight. Um, both of which I got for my birthday, and both of which work together really well, but I'm going to talk about London Review of Books today, and Slightly Foxed in a little while. London Review of Books was established in 1979, and it originally was an insert, I think, in the um, New York Review of Books. And then in 1980, um, in about May, it um, fledged out on its own. Is that a word? Um, and it's basically just like literary and intellectual essays book reviews, um, thoughts, um, and I really like it, it has up to 15 long reviews and short essays and by academics, um, writers and journalists, every issue, and it has shorter pieces of poetry or art or film reviews, um, it's got a funny letters page, well not, fu not necessarily funny, but it's got a, quite a, 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 an engaged letters page. Um, and it's basically got everything from political commentary and history to science um, and literary criticism. And it has about 70,000 subscribers, making it the largest literary um, uh, magazine subscription in Europe. Um, and I love it because at first I didn't really like the format because it's kind of like... Um, a magazine insert size from a newspaper, if you see what I mean. Um, but actually, it means I, well, I just fold it into my handbag and it folds in half again quite easily. And it just means that I can carry it anywhere and it's really light and they always have quite cool covers. I find the advertising really inoffensive because it's all book related or bookshop related or academic um, sort of things so um, so they've got um, an exhibition at the V&A advertised and they have um, you know nice holiday houses advertised so you can sort of imagine that maybe you will be going to Tuscany next week um, and writers retreats and things which I just you know even the advertising is nice um, and it's just quite um, for me it, it is the perfect uh, mix between books and current affairs they had very interesting um, thing on Brexit when Brexit was happening they had a good piece on that um, and they seem to and I'm always very naive about this but they seem to come across as really unbiased they, they don't seem to, they seem to be very much on the fence about a lot of things. Um, so there's no political, you just think that this is, um, it's just a very factual magazine, um, which I really like. Um, and also it takes me at least two weeks to read it, because um, some pieces are pages and pages long, you get... Um, little tiny snippets um, of reviews um, or you get really and and it doesn't matter if if some things aren't to your taste so um, there may be something that's quite sciencey that I will always attempt to read but it kind of loses me then there'll be something um, history based uh, that will really grab my eye so it, it has a really nice um, uh, mix of subjects which I think is really appealing to its readers. I also, um, for me, um, as a non-fiction fan, it does a good line in non-fiction review. Um, so although it's probably not going to be great for my bank account, um, I found there's a lot of books that I want to read that I wouldn't necessarily have um, known about had I not um, read it. So I think they do something crazy like six month subscription for £12 or something. Um, it's 3 95 per issue. Um, 
but you can get a subscription really easily which means you can also get it I think you can get it either downloaded to your Kindle or your iPad or both um, see I've just opened it on a page um, and it's a book review of American Revolutions a Continental History 1750 to 1804 right up my street so I'm just a huge fan of it and I, I'm sort of sad that I didn't get it before though I think it probably has has come to me at a time when I need it the most. The reason I got it was because I felt like my brain was going to baby mush and um, yeah you can't I can't get a newspaper every day I can't get through the amount of stuff you get in a newspaper now I can't get through a newspaper in a week because you're just kind of I like the gardening section, I like gardening, but when am I going to sit down and read a gardening section? Um, but I, so I thought about Rolling Stone, I love the writing in Rolling Stone, I thought about um, the New Yorker, which I love, but again, I feel like I don't live in New York, I wanted something more, um, not necessarily more London specific, but not as American specific as the New Yorker, although that also had a very good thing on Brexit. Um, the Spectator was too highbrow for me. My husband gets Private Eye and I've never loved it. And the week, which he also gets, was just not enough info. And I just find with this, um, it's got enough, as I said, of the current affairs and, you know, what's going on, there will be some form of commentary on it. But also, it's just nice to be lost in an essay about something for 10 minutes while you have a cup of coffee and then that's it so it's a bit like reading a book um but not having to have the the not having to go back and think you know what happened what bit had I just got to or um anything like that so I'm a huge huge fan of this does anyone else subscribe to it um I always used to sit when I worked in publishing it was always hanging around on tables and I never I never bothered to read it because it sounded it sounded really odd to me when I was in you know twenty London Review of Books. I was like, do they just review every book that's published in London? That's just going to be like work, but it's not like work. It's fantastic. So um, let me know if you are a fellow subscriber, or if you've been thinking about it, or what subscriptions do you get? Um, I feel like with the age of iPads and Kindles, I know a lot of um, people who now just get everything on their iPad, but um, which I think is great because I think getting all these magazines and stuff is terrible um, waste but um, it's just quite nice to have one thing that I, I feel like it delivers a lot and um, in terms of makeup and beauty and stuff which is my other existence um, I get a lot of that from the internet now um, you know or, or I'm getting email press releases or I'm seeing everything on Instagram um, Fashion Week is now on Instagram so, um, you know, what subscriptions do you get? Have I missed something? Um, and uh, thank you very much for watching.